money, the root to all evil, next on Table Talk. And today I'd like to talk to you about the almighty dollar. That's right, money. Everybody says that money is the root to all evil. Many, many, many years ago, Pink Floyd came up with a song entitled Money. In the songs, one of the lyrics simply read, Money, so they say, is the root of all evil today. My question to you is, is that the truth? So many people want to say that money is the root of all evil. So, but let us ask, what does the Bible say? So let us turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, and we're going to look at verses 9 and 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, 9 and 10. And we read there, but they that will be rich fall into, into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which, while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows." This verse that we just read, these two verses that we just read, I would argue are probably some of the most misquoted verses that there are out there. And believe me, there are a lot of misquoted verses out there. Uh, the people often quote, as I said, that money is the root of all evil. But this very small change, from saying that the love of money is the root of all evil to the money is the root of all evil, that change, although it's, like I said, it's very small, but it has an, an enormous impact on the meaning of those two verses. See, according to the misquoted version, money and wealth are the source or the root of all the evil that, that we see here in this world. Uh, clearly that's not the case. The Bible is very adamant that sin, sin, is the root of all evil. In your free time, check out Matthew chapter 15, verse 19, Romans uh, 5, 12, and James 1, 15 to explore uh, about sin being the uh, root of evil. But when the verse is viewed from the correct perspective, when the verses that we read are, are viewed from the correct perspective, we find out that it is the love of money, not, not money, not money itself, but the love of money that is the cause of all the trouble and chaos that we find around. Now, let me put this right on the table here so you don't say well you know brother ken said this or, or that you know there's nothing wrong with money there's nothing wrong with wealth in and of itself okay many biblical figures throughout history you know they, they were wealthy at one point or another you see it's when money begins to control you that's when the trouble begins Greed causes people to do all kinds of things that they naturally would not do. Um, this can be easily verified. Just look at TV court dramas and stuff like that. It's the love of money that motivates people to lie, to steal, to cheat, embezzle, even to murder. People who have a love of money lack the godliness and the contentment, which is what, it, what is actually true gain. Um, the love of money is a sin. 
Okay, the love of money is a sin, and all sin ultimately is a sin against God. Now, Jesus made it very clear when he said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, that no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He said, you cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon. Now, here, Jesus is equating the love of money to idolatry, where the love of money becomes the master over us. Anything that is more important to us than God is an idol. Okay? God commanded us back in Exodus 20, uh, verse 3, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, in Matthew 19, Jesus encounters a rich man, and, and he asks, and, and, and uh, the rich man asks Jesus what he has to do to get eternal life. And Jesus tells him, hey, keep the commandments, okay? Um, but when Jesus tells him that, the man turns around and says, you know, I, I, I do keep all the commandments. Well, at this point, Jesus, you know, who knows what the man, what's in the heart of this man, basically tests this man's ability to obey that first commandment by telling him to sell all of his possessions and give it to the poor. Well, guess what? The man failed the test. He couldn't give his possessions away because they had basically become an idol to him. They became his master, and he was their slave. And Jesus tells us then that later on in Matthew uh, 1924, that it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. In other words, wealth is one of the biggest obstacles in coming to faith in Christ. Wealth becomes a master over our lives. Because of greed, we begin to do uh, more and more things that, that, will, that drive us further and further away from God. But there is good news. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said to them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Until next time, may the good Lord take a like and feed. Take care. Hi, Ken here. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Table Talk. And if you have any questions about the Bible or Scripture, make sure to email me at questions at KennethParishMinistries.org and I'll do my best to get back with you. So make sure you include your email address so that I can. And who knows, maybe your question will be on a future episode of Table Talk. Thanks, take care, and may the good Lord take a liking to you.